Well, it's 2020 already. And instead of flying cars and hydrated pizzas, we have these stupid things, the gimbal. We have the internet, we have YouTubers now, and by now most of you would have already gone out and bought something like this, which means I probably should have made a video like this a long time ago, but better late than never. So today, we're gonna to talk about my tips and tricks on how to get the best out of something like this for weddings and events. Now, as soon as you get your gimbal, the first thing you probably want to shoot with it, besides an awesome selfie video like this, is a walking shot. Now, amongst all the axes of stabilization that these gimbals have, what they don't have, at least at this stage, is a way to have suspension in a vertical way. So you'll get this when you walk. You're gonna get the bobs. And also, these kind of gimbal setups are light. So you're not gonna get free stabilization from the inertia of the thing, unless you pack it up really heavy, I guess, but no one wants that. So what I suggest for walking shots then is to put it in what we call the flashlight mode. So if you get it in a setting that locks it forwards like that, and it's PF on the Xeon crane, then using the horizontal axis, you can see as we move, it's a bit more forgiving than if I was like this and I move. There's nothing that gives way. So if you combine that with your ninja walk, you'll get something like this. And one thing we do when we're in the field and it's all very exciting, and I know I've done this, and I've annoyed myself later in the editing suite, is just rush a bit too much. So a lot of the times you'll see something and your brain is going at 100 miles an hour. So in your mind, time could be going slowly, but it's not. You might grab a shot, you straighten it up, you line it up. That's what's called looking for the shot. And you're recording this whole time. And as soon as you get it and it's perfect, you cut. You go, yep, got it. And there's nothing more frustrating than that when you're editing. That the only thing in the shot is moving to find the shot. Then you start focusing. Then you stable just for a second and then you cut. Like that drives people crazy and will drive you crazy. So what I suggest is as well as find your shot first, then hit record, as well as that, I suggest that we count, like count to 10 or at least count to five. So in a shot like this, which by the way, we'll get three different shots by doing it this way rather than one shot. If I was doing a shot like this, where I'm just doing a reveal or a pan, like an establishing shot. If I do it too fast and then cut, that may not be enough in the edit. But what you can do is you can give three different shots in the one take. So at the beginning, you count to five. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Then you can do the shot you had in mind. So smooth, so sexy. And then at the end, also count to five. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. And that'll give your editor three different choices to use in the edit later on. And she'll stop hating you. And she'll put away that voodoo doll of you, at least for a moment, until you do something else that pisses her off. Oh, one thing that I want to add though, um, as an editor, I mean, what pisses me off the most is the gimbal doesn't have to move all the time. Like I get footage of just everything is moving. And there's one prime example, um, and that's family photos after a wedding. Now, I know it's not the most exciting thing, but sometimes, you know, we, we cover that. And sometimes I do need that shot, whether it's in the long edit later on, like a documentary of the day, or maybe even like, someone special in that family is giving a speech and there's no other shots of them, then I can use that shot. But when I'm in the edit sometimes and my, my shooter has covered that, probably begrudgingly, has covered that moment with a gimbal, there's shots of the family photos 
just always moving like this. No, 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 this way, family. Oh, the family photo. The thing is, for that particular shot, and probably a few more, it doesn't have to move. And that might not be the only shot that looks good, just holding the composition. Like, it's a gimbal. It is designed to be stable, right? So, why not give me a stable shot? Just every now and then. Really good composition. If you like your thirds or your center or your perspective lines or lots of negative space. Sometimes, and especially in just a portrait moment, you know, the bride is looking beautiful, the sun's hitting the back of her dress and it's just a great shot. Get at least a shot of not moving. Like, like I said, it's a gimbal. It's, it's so good at not you know, moving around. It's kind of like being on a tripod, right? So I would set up my shot, sometimes 50 mils, 85 even works well on this gimbal. Set up a beautiful portrait, hit record, 4K, don't move. Count to 10, let it unfold in front of you, and you've got a beautiful shot. It doesn't always have to move. Okay, so we've jumped in the studio quickly just to talk about what focus settings I use when gimbling on the a7 III. And mostly it's just zone focus, which takes care of most of my filming needs. And when things get tricky, then I switch to a large flexible spot. And the reason you want that is that you can actually see what you're focusing on when you touch to focus on the back of the screen. If it's anything else, you actually can't see what you're focusing on, which isn't much help. So let's get Gizmo to help us demonstrate. As you can see, zone focus is on right now on the Sony 28mm F2, which is good enough for most things. But like I said, when it gets tricky, like if a bride's face is amongst other faces, like walking down the aisle, or maybe a tricky dancing shot, then you want to focus on her face. And the good thing about this technique is you can actually switch while filming to flexible spot and back again. So in this case, we want to focus on Gizmo, Gizmo's little face. So we can press there, press on the 85, press back on Gizmo. So those are pretty much the only two focus modes that I use. And sometimes manual focus if it's on a tripod. Well, g'day Australia. For the rest of this video, I've decided to drive somewhere a little bit nicer than the front of my house. And there's only a couple of things left that I want to talk about. I'll still keep it very short. I've brought Lila along with me and we're just going to go through some of the settings that I like to use when we're doing these shoots, whether we use 4K or 1080 and also what kind of focus settings to use on this a7 III. And our goal is to decide when is the best time to use 4K and when is the best time to use 1080. All right, let's do it. Okay, so there's Lila, give us a wave. So firstly, we're just going to do 4K and Lila just walk towards camera and just look around. So right now I'm in 4 it's a bit too far, slow down a little bit. So right now I'm in 4K and this gimbal setup on 28 mils, slow down a little bit more. That's it. This gimbal setup at 28 mils is perfect for this. Like there's no need to slow it down because the shot's working and I'm getting the most out of the camera. I'm doing 4K. Okay, keep coming and just look out towards the sea there. That's it, nice. Since this shot is working, there's no, there's no real reason for me to switch from 4K. But what I like to do is shoot a bit of both. We'll do a 4K and we'll do a, a slow-mo 1080 if we have time. So just go back again. So for 1080, to me it looks okay if you get close. I might like to stay there. And if I go far from my subject, that's when I can really start to tell on the computer. Arguably, if you're just sending this to a mobile device and that's your final destination for the film, is just to be viewed on a phone, 
then you could argue you could get away with a softer shot. On the back of the screen it definitely looks okay, and perhaps I might even use that to contradict myself, but if I was switching to 1080, I'd come in about here. So Lila, just walk again for me. That's it, you can go faster now. We're in 1080. So Lila, you can look around, let the wind take your hair. Oh yeah, good modeling up, good stuff. And so when I switch this to slow-mo at any time, I should see the hair moving, it should be brilliant. So I'm in zone, zone mode, I'm just letting the camera do its thing. And I've given the shutter speed high enough uh, headroom there so it can do its own adjustments as well. So I'm at 28 mils, F2, blow the background out nicely, but not too much. Great lens for gimbaling. And there's a Tiffin filter on there as well, which is just blowing out that sun nicely. So what we'll do after this, we'll compare this to the S and Q mode, which should, in my, in my opinion, should look the same. Okay, go back. Another good use for the gimbal. When you've got a subject in the middle, it makes the stabilization look even better because you're focused on the center of the frame. So when do I shoot 1080 on a gimbal like this? Apart from some, you know, beautiful slow-mo model or bride walking shot, or the couple walking hand in hand along the beach. Those are good candidates for 1080, but you get the picture. There is one other shot definitely worth mentioning. If I'm filming a wedding, and I'm largely in 4K, this thing tops out at 30p, but we're in Australia, so that's 25p. And I want to do a slow-mo shot, particularly of the bride coming back down the aisle and flower petals and whatnot. Then, you know, during the signing of the register, um, that's a good time to change your camera back to a slow-mo 1080 mode. Get that shot coming down the, down the aisle. I make sure I always do that. And then for the rest of the day, I'm largely back on 4K again, except if I need those grand slow-mos. And I don't overuse slow-mo either. That's a personal pet peeve, but that's not what this video is about. Let's get back to gimbal stuff, hey? All right. Okay, one of my favorite tricks on the gimbal is to use it as a fake slider and a fake jib or a crane. And the way we do that is to just put it in lock mode. There we are. Lock mode. And that way, no matter what I do with the gimbal, it should stay facing straight, up and down. So we'll start with our fake drone shot or our fake crane or fake jib shot. And here's my 4K slide. Hopefully won't need any stabilizing in post. Oh, well, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, especially if you made it this far in. Let me know if you found it useful or you would rather I just go back to goofing off. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section down below some suggestions. You want tips and tricks, you're goofing off. Tips and tricks, goofing off. Or maybe a bit of both. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.